you and I can go home, sit down on a settee, have a glass of wine, glass of lager, go to bed in a comfy bed, mm. eat, you know, oh, fancy something to eat, and go downstairs, open the kitchen cupboard, get something out. Yeah. When we have to go out, we put them things in place so they can do the same. Perhaps not in the same luxury as us, but at least they've got something to sit on, something to sleep on, mm. open the cover up and they're full. So we go home at the end of the night thinking, yes, that person's okay. Mm. That person's got support from communities first. That person's got support from Brown Island community, I was saying. Yeah? Mm. So we walk away then. It's very rare that I'm called back in because with the support and level that's been brought in, um, it, that person then is able to lead perhaps a debt-free independent mm. life because of the support that they've had in there. Mm. The confidence is built through their mental health um, counsellor. So there's all different issues mm. that we... Every day is different in track two. Dave Smiler. <laughs> <laughs> Met this man just over two years right. ago. Mm. He works with Brown Avon at the recycling right. yard. So when voids come up that we spoke about, mm. Dave is the one that contacts me. Um, <coughs> my white goods, as you see out there now, that's been in. Um, Dave will have them done with him now tomorrow. His team will pat test them, bring them back to me, I'm able to donate them out. Right. When anything I need, like I'll ring him up, if I'm short on something, Dave, I need a wardrobe, I need a bed. Right, he's the fixer. He's the fixer. He's the fixer. Mm. Yeah, he's... He comes across, <laughs> look at him, <laughs> but he's got a massive heart, believe me. Right. Yeah, I work very close with him and Leslie down in Brown Island. Yeah. Um, like I said, without Dave, Brown Island, without Schmidt's first, mm. it's all going by the council, track two, wouldn't be able to do what we do. Right. It's some sort of synonymous with, with help now, so people know exactly where to go. Right. They all know Sue. Yeah. Del boy. They all, know <laughs> <laughs> they all know where they know how to contact her. Mm. She's. It doesn't matter what time it is. I've had phone calls at ten o'clock at night. You know, yeah. like she. It doesn't matter. She never shuts off. Mm. Ever. That's one of the big parts of it, isn't it? is mm. for people to know. Because I mean, there's lots of different organisations yeah. and support groups, but when someone is in need of help, it's difficult to know where to go to, isn't it? Mm. Like if if if. Like what you're doing seems to be joining all that yeah. up and being the face yeah. of that and then yeah. being able to make that work. Yeah. Just been into a house now in Blind Avon. Everything is being recycled out. The van, as you've just seen, has got white goods on and a flat screen telly. This is now going down to a four chammer to David Smith to be pat tested. Once it's been pat tested, track two then are able to donate it out. Last year, Bron Avon made sure 106 items for Track 2 were safety checked by one of their experts. I work sort of on the grants and the funding side to help track with their long-term sustainability, uh, obviously involved with all the projects they do. Uh, in recent times, I've been working uh, to look to secure some of the salaries for Sue and Dawn, as well as helping to set up the Shabby Chic business which is based now down in the Woodlands Fields so I've submitted uh, applications to the Coalfields Regeneration Trust in order that they can uh, uh, continue uh, that project and also ensure the sustainability of uh, track, uh, track 2 in general. It's a pleasure for myself and other Communities First staff to work with Sue and Track 2 because of the amount of work they do across the whole field uh, of donating furniture and items and looking after the, the people within Torvine and the communities. So it's just generally the day-to-day -day ongoing work. It's a pleasure to be involved with TRAC. How, how long have you been involved with TRAC too? Mm, quite a few years now. Over five um, years? Well, yes, more or less. <laughs> what, working with other volunteers and staff, what are they like? Well, I get on well with them. We have a bit of fun <laughs> together. Been in there every day. We we buy lots of stuff out of there. Our family and friends buy lots of stuff out of there. Um, there's always a really really good assortment of ornaments, chinaware, bedding, clothing. Um, there's just in general, it's it's really really Teddies, good, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it's really good. It's really good. It, it can be donating. It can be to go in and support them to buy stuff off them. And people were like, oh, I didn't know they did that in there. Yeah. And, you know, stuff like that. 
Tractu has um, come on board with us as a charity through Bronavon, through us doing the voids and with us being able to stop things going to landfill. There's lots of um, normally white goods that's left behind. There could be lots of like wardrobes, uh, settees with a fire label on obviously and we would contact Sue and Sue would end up then turning around and um, coming in and having a look at these goods to make sure they're exactly what she wants. On the landfill, 2014-2015, uh, we did 18.9 tonnes. On 2015-2016, we've done 29.4 tonnes, which we've saved from landfill. And being a small unit that we are, I think that's you know, exceptionally good. In July, we're off up to the MRW Awards. We've been uh, selected as a finalist for our work in recycling. The best thing for me is, is, is actually for the charity of seeing the rewarding. Um, I've been with Sue to some of the families where you see their faces, where they've had nothing, and we can provide them with basic things, but that can mean a difference to somebody who had nothing in the beginning. Oh, we love track too. <laughs> yeah, we I love track. Yeah. We donate and we buy from there. And we love the support it gives the community. We also advise our customers if they need things or their property is emptied, then we just um, point them in the right direction of track too. What do you think of Sue and the team, the volunteers? Oh, we love Sue. <laughs> She's a woman after her own heart. No, they're a fab team. Yeah, great. Yeah, We're very close, team. all of us yes. very close. Yeah. Yeah. We work together well. It's the best thing I've happened at you in Trevetta. Apart from us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Certainly don't come <laughs> if I knew that people needed support, needed help, I wanted to avoid help them avoid going to the high interest lenders and then I could make use of Sue um, and, and steer people in her way so that they were able to get the items that they needed really, really quickly. If I give her a referral, um, it can be there that, you know, either later that day or the following day. It's really, really swift and it's great because it does mean that people don't take on any any debt that they can't afford or any more debt that they can't afford. The staff and the volunteers, I think Sue creates um, such passion um, for the volunteers who work with her. They're so committed. She's so well known within the community and she really does put, um, you know, she really will put herself out in terms of helping and supporting people. And she's really well known. So people do come to her um, as a, you know, perhaps even prefer to go to see Sue, a familiar face in the community, rather than go to an agency. So Sue um, refers to us, so they might come to her as the first point of contact and she will help them with what they need and then she'll refer on to us um, in, in terms of providing additional support in terms of what other grants might be available at the free and low cost services that people could access to help their money go further. And also she's got the commitment of a lot of other agencies such as Citizens Advice, Braun Avon, you know, the, you know, absolutely loads are in partnership with with um, track two, so she's able to refer them on, and people can they can come here, and it's really comfortable. It's a really nice venue for people to come to. It's very homely. It's very welcoming, and I think that you know that knocks down a lot of barriers. It's it's not frightening for people to come here at all. We're going on a trip to Cardiff. We're going to watch Cardiff City play Derby, because uh, lovely Tony Colville and uh, Michael Sheen have arranged for this to happen. For two hundred from the community to go down. Um, track two to go on the pitch at half time in front of 27,000 plus to, a seat, to receive an award of achievement that track two, what work we've done throughout Torvine. Good day for track two. Brilliant, absolutely fantastic. Thank you to Cardiff Football City and Michael Sheen, Tony Cavell. 
Excuse me. What an achievement. Absolutely fantastic. Brilliant for Tractor Charity. And over to my right is Mr. Red now. Ooh, he can use it just like me. <laughs> He's a star. Well done, Cardiff!